This is Pratima from Planet Physiology. Today we shall discuss properties of cardiac muscle. Properties of cardiac muscle can be classified as morphological properties, electrical properties, mechanical properties and metabolic properties. In this session we are going to study morphological and electrical properties and in the next session we shall study mechanical and metabolic properties. Let us start with morphological properties. Cardiac muscles are striated muscles like that of skeletal muscle but they are branched. They possess intercalated discs. These are the part of sarcolemma and contains gap junctions and desmosomes. Shown in this picture in pink color is the intercalated disc and here are the gap junctions. Gap junctions allow transmission of action potential from one cell to the next cell so that cardiac muscle can act as syncytium, a single unit. Desmosomes anchor the ends of the cardiac muscle fibers together so that the cells do not pull apart during their contraction and transmit the contractile force evenly. Coming to the electrical properties. Cardiac muscle shows the property of excitability, autorhythmicity and conductivity. Let us study them in detail. Excitability means ability to respond to an adequate stimulus. Resting membrane potential of cardiac muscle is minus 90 millivolts and the type of action potential shown by the cardiac muscle is plateau potential. As you can note in this diagram, there is a sustained depolarization between depolarization and the repolarization and hence this type of action potential is known as plateau potential. Action potential begins with the phase of rapid depolarization. This is known as phase 0 of action potential. It is brought about by opening of fast sodium channels leading to sodium influx. This changes resting membrane potential from minus 90 millivolts to plus 20 millivolts. At this point, fast sodium channels close and hence membrane potential starts to decrease. This phase is known as phase 1 or initial rapid repolarization phase of plateau potential. It lasts for very short interval because at the same time there is opening of slow calcium sodium channels which allow influx of calcium as well as sodium into the myocardium. This calcium sodium influx is responsible for sustained stage of depolarization that is plateau phase and that lasts for about 0.2 seconds. Within the next fraction of a second slow calcium channels begin to close and at the same time there is opening of voltage gated potassium channels. So there is stoppage of calcium influx and at the same time there is beginning of potassium efflux. This causes repolarization of the cardiac muscle that is membrane potential reaches back to minus 90 millivolts. So let us quickly summarize the important points in excitability property of cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscles show plateau potential where initial depolarization is caused by sodium influx plateau by calcium and sodium influx through slow calcium channels and repolarization is brought about by potassium efflux. The next electrical property of cardiac muscle is autorhythmicity. Actually it is the combination of two separate properties automaticity and rhythmicity. Autorhythmicity is defined as ability to spontaneously generate its own rhythm even in absence of its nerve supply. Almost all the parts of cardiac muscles which include sinoatrial node, atrioventricular node, Purkinje fibers, atrial muscles as well as ventricular muscles possess this property. It can be easily demonstrated in frog's heart by applying strenuous ligatures. We are not going into the experimental details at this stage but 
these pictures show the experimental tracing demonstrating property of atrial and ventricular muscles to generate their rhythm when they fail to receive impulses from the pacemaker normally their activity is suppressed by the primary pacemaker due to its fastest rate of impulse generation so even though all the parts of cardiac muscles are capable of generating their own rhythm sa node which is situated in the right atrium just below the superior vena cava acts as pacemaker of the heart it has small round p cells which generate impulses at the fastest rate usually between 70 to 80 beats per minute and the reason for this is low resting membrane potential which is about minus 55 to minus 60 millivolts now the question arises how low resting membrane potential makes sa node to be the pacemaker you can understand this concept very easily by this example say there is a competition who completes the maximum cycles of up and down the hill in the given time a person a starts and finishes the cycle from the line a and a person b from the line b logically you can deduce that person a will perform maximum cycles as he has to cover less distance from that of person b in the same way if you consider the starting line as resting membrane potential you can understand that sa node due to its low resting membrane potential can generate impulses at fastest rate because it has to start from minus 60 reach to 0 and come back to minus 60 millivolt in case of av node resting membrane potential is more negative same is true for purkinje fibers and ventricular muscles their resting membrane potential is about minus 90 millivolt so they need longer time to complete the action potential hence under normal circumstances sa node acts as pacemaker resting membrane potential of pacemaker cells slowly drifts towards the threshold and once it reaches the threshold it gets depolarized which is then followed by repolarization again the resting potential gradually drifts towards the threshold and the sequence is repeated again and again this slowly changing resting membrane potential is known as pacemaker potential or pre potential now let us study the ionic basis for pacemaker potential why is it not steady at the end of repolarization as the value reaches to minus 60 millivolt potassium conductance decreases that is potassium channels close and potassium efflux stops at the same time there is opening of funny sodium channels so the sodium influx begins these sodium channels are hcn channels that is hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated channels sa node has hcn 4 isoform and sodium current through them is designated as if or funny current this is responsible for initial change in the resting membrane potential towards the threshold in the later half of pre potential transient calcium channels open and initiate calcium influx this calcium influx is responsible for remaining half of the pacemaker potential once the threshold is reached long lasting calcium channels that is l type of calcium channels open and cause rapid calcium influx leading to depolarization now pay attention over here depolarization in sa node is caused due to calcium influx and not due to sodium influx because at this low potential sodium channels are inactivated and hence do not participate in action potential at about 0 millivolt level this long lasting calcium channels close and potassium channels open causing potassium efflux this brings about repolarization and the membrane potential reaches back to the resting level at this level potassium channels close and funny sodium channels open 
and the entire sequence is repeated again and again. If due to any reasons SA node fails to generate impulses, other parts like AV node or Purkinje fibers or ventricular muscles can take over the function of pacemaker. Any pacemaker other than SA node is referred as ectopic pacemaker. If AV node acts as pacemaker, it generates impulses at the rate of about 40 to 60 per minute, whereas Purkinje fibers or ventricular muscles generate impulses at much slower rate which is 15 to 40 per minute. This rate is just sufficient to maintain circulation to vital organs at rest but not enough for routine activities. In such cases, to maintain normal cardiac activity, an artificial pacemaker is implanted in the patients. It is a battery operated device which stimulates heart at the specific rate via electrodes. As shown in the picture and the corresponding X-ray, here is the device placed in the chest and the electrodes are passed through the subclavian vein into the right atrium as well as ventricle where they will stimulate the cardiac muscles to initiate the heartbeat. Now coming to the last electrical property of cardiac muscle, conductivity. It is defined as ability to conduct impulses from one point to the next point. Cardiac muscles have specialized conducting system to conduct impulses. It includes SA node, internodal fibers, AV node, bundle of his, left and right bundle branches and Purkinje fibers. As we have seen earlier, SA node is located near the opening of superior vena cava, whereas AV node is located in the right atrium near the opening of coronary sinus. Signals from SA node are conducted to AV node via anterior, middle and posterior internodal fibers. These internodal fibers conduct signals at the velocity of 1 meter per second. Interatrial fiber conducts impulses to the left atrium so that depolarization of right and left atrium takes place simultaneously. When the signals reach to AV node, conduction velocity falls drastically. It is just 0 0.05 meters per second because AV nodal fibers are smaller in size and they possess less number of gap junctions. So there is delay of 0.13 seconds in passage of impulse from AV node to Purkinje fibers. But this delay has its own importance. Because of AV nodal delay, atria act as primer pump so that complete ventricular feeling can be achieved before blood is pumped out of the ventricles. From AV node, Impulses are conducted to bundle of his and this is the only passage for impulse conduction from atria to ventricles because these two structures are separated by non-conducting fibrous tissues. From bundle of his impulses then travel in the right and left bundle branches which are located beneath the endocardial surface of interventricular septum and then to the Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers are the larger fibers and possess more number of gap junctions and therefore their conduction velocity is maximum. It is 4 meters per second. Purkinje fibers fuse with ventricular muscle fibers and transmit signals to ventricular muscles. Because of rapid rate of conduction by Purkinje fibers, both the ventricles contract simultaneously which is essential for proper pumping of the blood. So this is the summary of spread of impulse in the heart. Impulses arise in SA node. It causes depolarization of atria and impulses also reach to the AV node at the same time. From AV node impulses arrive in the left and the right bundle branches after a delay of about 0.13 seconds. This causes depolarization of interventricular septum. And then impulses are conducted to Purkinje fibers leading to depolarization of both the ventricles. In case of ventricles, first part to depolarize is endocardial surface and then the epicardial surface. The last part 
of ventricles to depolarize is the base of the heart. Repolarization of ventricle starts in the epicardial surface and then proceeds to the endocardial surface. This knowledge is important to understand the polarity of QRS complex and T wave in ECG. Knowledge of conducting system of the heart is essential to understand clinical aspects related with it. In case of conduction block, there is a block in impulse conduction from SA node to the ventricular muscles. This causes failure of ventricle to contract. Conduction block usually occurs at AV node or the right or left bundle branch. It could be of three types, first degree, second degree or the third degree depending upon the severity of conduction block and it is easily diagnosed with the help of ECG. In case of third degree conduction block, ventricles do not receive any impulses from SA node and hence Purkinje fibers gain their autorhythmicity after a delay of about 5 to 20 seconds. So during this time, cardiac pumping is totally absent and this leads to lack of blood flow to the brain leading to fainting. As Purkinje fibers take over the function of pacemaker in the next few seconds, the cardiac pumping is restored and the person recovers. This phenomenon is called as Stoke Adams syndrome. Let us quickly summarize what we have learned today. Morphological properties of cardiac muscle include they are striated muscles branched and possess intercalated disc. Intercalated discs allow transmission of force to the neighboring cardiac muscles in uniform manner and they also possess gap junctions because of which cardiac muscles act as syncytium. Electrical properties include excitability, autorhythmicity and conductivity. Cardiac muscles show plateau potential that is sustained depolarization and it is because of opening of slow calcium sodium channels. SA node acts as pacemaker of the heart and it is because of its low resting membrane potential which allows membrane potential to gradually drift towards the threshold and generate action potential. Pacemaker potential is brought about initially by decreased conductance of potassium and increased conductance of sodium through funny channels. In the later half of the pacemaker potential, there is opening of transient calcium channels leading to calcium influx. Depolarization is brought about by opening of long lasting calcium channels and repolarization by opening of voltage gated potassium channels. Cardiac muscle has specialized conducting system which includes SA node, internodal fibers, AV node, bundle of his, Purkinje fibers and ventricular muscles. There is a delay of about 0.13 seconds between the conduction of impulses from atria to ventricle and it is responsible for 20% extra filling of ventricles. So here we finish with the morphological and electrical properties of cardiac muscle. In the next part, we shall study mechanical and metabolic properties of cardiac muscle. Thank you. If you enjoy my sessions, press the like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed my channel, press the subscribe button. To get notifications about new releases, press bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.